My name is Oliver Hill. I'm a retired professor of psychology at Virginia State University, and I'm currently a member of the board of C-Mind. We're living in a time of unprecedented stress from the anxiety and isolation of the COVID-19 pandemic to the outrage and anger at the senseless killing of black people in the name of law enforcement to the disgust with leaders who seek to stoke the fires of division instead of healing. I'd like to offer you a practice today, not to remove justified anger or pain, but as a way to hold and honor those emotions without them becoming debilitating and preventing us from doing the healing work that must be done. I grew up in the 1950s in the segregated South. My father was a prominent civil rights attorney and our family would receive daily death threats. We even had a cross burn in our yard one year. The idea of the necessary struggle for social justice was instilled in me from this early age. This activism was stoked further as a student at Howard University in the 1960s, which at that time was a major epicenter of black political thought and liberation movements. One day, while I was at Howard, I had what I would now call a transpersonal experience, one that changed my life completely. I was walking around Rock Creek Park in the center of DC on what was a perfect spring day. Suddenly, my awareness seemed to expand and I lost all sense of ego boundaries. It was the proverbial experience of being one with the universe. There was no sense of me, just this ocean of bliss and absolute peace and an awareness of the interconnection of everything and everyone. It lasted for what seemed like an eternity, but then I could feel gradually old constrictions starting to reappear in my awareness. It was as if limiting thoughts were gathering together and reconstructing my old separate sense of self. Soon it was over and I was back to my sense of me. I was both ecstatic from the experience, but also devastated that it hadn't lasted. I immediately set out on a journey to try and understand what had happened to me, and most importantly, to replicate it. This investigation soon led me to the path of meditation. Meditation was originally developed not as a treatment modality for stress, but as a means to experience the depths of consciousness beyond the thinking level of the mind. It's not a tool for suppressing emotion, but a method for becoming anchored in a deeper level of being so that we are not buffeted about by our emotions. This gives us the ability to do the work that must be done from a place of love and compassion rather than a place of anger and othering. So let's do a simple meditation practice now. So first, find a comfortable posture where your back is comfortably upright. Take a few full breaths in and out. Feel your body start to relax. And you can gently close your eyes if you haven't done so. And start by just noticing the contents of your awareness, the thoughts, the feelings, the sensations. If you're feeling anger, notice the texture of your anger, the visceral sensation of your feelings of hurt and pain. Don't interfere. Just witness what's there. And now let your awareness expand to the connection with your surroundings. Feel rooted to the seat below you. 
and the earth beneath you. Feel the strength and stability that comes from your connection to the earth. Become aware of the web of relationships in your life and the strength that comes from that connection. You can start with your immediate relations, but then imagine that web expanding all the way back to a common ancestor for all of humanity. Feel the strength that comes from that sense of connection. Now have a sense of expansiveness in your inner space. Entertain the idea that there are no boundaries to your awareness. And let's just sit for a moment with this sense of boundlessness. Now you can begin to slowly bring yourself out of meditation. Take a few breaths again. And when it feels comfortable, you can open your eyes. So I invite you to try this practice again for an extended period of time on your own. And the steps are, first, take a comfortable upright posture. Take a few full breaths in and out. And then just witness the, conscious, the contents of your awareness without judgment or censorship. Cultivate the sense of the web of connections between you and everyone and everything in your life. And then finally, you can have the sense of the unboundedness of consciousness, no limits to your awareness. A practice like this once or twice a day helps us to stay connected to the source of love and compassion within which then becomes the source of power for fighting for peace and justice in the world. My personal path of meditation is called Siddha Yoga. If you'd like to know more about this path and my teacher, Guru Mai Chidvalasananda, you can go to www.siddhayoga.org. That's S-I-D-D-H-A-Y-O-G-A. Dot org. Thank you so much for your participation today. And may your meditations bear great fruit and support your healing and loving actions in the world.